What's up guys, I'm Dean and today I'm gonna try something different, so let me know what you think. And leave a like. James Gunn just announced chapter one of the DCU and there's some really interesting and exciting stuff in there. And although it's not exactly fair to do so, it's hard not to compare this to the MCU because DC is Marvel's biggest competitor and DC are finally starting to fight back. And that's what I wanted to talk about here. Not the individual projects James Gunn announced, but his overall approach to creating a cinematic universe. Whether he's following in the footsteps of his old boss Kevin Feige, or whether he's carving his own path. Today, I will answer the question, to Feige or not to Feige. I was really proud of that line. It's completely understandable why people are calling James Gunn the Kevin Feige of the DC Universe. Because he is. James Gunn is the one making all the creative decisions over at DC Studios, while Kevin Feige is doing the same thing at Marvel Studios. But I think there's one key difference between Kevin Feige and James Gunn that will inform the differences between the MCU and the DCU. Kevin Feige has always just been one thing, and that's a producer. He started producing with the first X-Men film, and then before the MCU even started, he produced 13 Marvel movies. He's never directed and he's never written, he's only ever produced, and yes, he has a great passion for the comic books, but he's only seeing things from the perspective of a producer. James Gunn is also immensely passionate about these comic books and the characters within. You can tell by all the obscure references he loves to chuck into his superhero films. But James Gunn is not just a producer. He started off as a writer and then a director and then a producer. And that's why he's in a much stronger position than Kevin Feige. Before we go any further, I think it's important to get one distinction clear, something that fans somehow always seem to forget, despite it being very obvious. Yes, James Gunn and Kevin Feige are approaching the shared universe problem from different angles, but they have the same goal. Money. That's all they're after. Obviously, is money. As long as their films get people into cinemas and their TV shows get people subscribed to HBO Max or Disney+, Plus, they don't care. Just, they're going different ways to go around this. To figure out why Feige has succeeded and why I think James Gunn is going to succeed, I think it's important to look at some of the failed shared universes that have died over the years. First, let's talk about what's perhaps the biggest known failure, the Dark Universe. All we got from the Dark Universe was Tom Cruise's The Mummy and the film was so bad they just gave up from there. This is what I would call putting your cart before the horse. The Mummy was so bogged down in setup and world building for the wider universe that they forgot to make a good film in the first place. Sony have also not hidden the fact that they have tried to make a shared universe many a times, and this started back with The Amazing Spider-Man. After The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Sony had multiple Spider-Man spin-offs planned, but they were so focused on the spin-offs and the setup and the world building within The Amazing Spider-Man 2 that they forgot to make The Amazing Spider-Man 2 a good film. And that film was such a financial failure that they gave up. All the shared universes that have failed over the years have failed for a similar reason, and that's because they're too focused on creating a shared universe that they forget to make solid, great individual stories. But both Kevin Feige and James Gunn are taking different approaches to all these failures. Let's look at Kevin Feige first. First things first, I think the reason Kevin Feige succeeded was because he was very careful about the creatives he brought on board. He brought on successful actors and directors, people he could trust to make good films, but more importantly, also people he could trust to toe the line and people he could control. So these creatives could make good films, but also they could make good films in the style or heading in the direction that he wanted. Because, this should go without saying, to create a good shared universe, you have to create good films. Now, Kevin Feige did make mistakes early on. Maybe he exerted too much control over the unpopular Iron Man 2, or maybe he exerted not enough control over the unpopular The Incredible Hulk. But after a while, Kevin Feige found a really good balance of letting creatives make good films while still making films which he had control over and fit into his universe. Yes, the MCU kind of all feels the same, but who cares because it makes money. With Phase 4 though, Kevin Feige has slightly lost his touch with oversight. 
The reason I think Phase 4 has been slightly unpopular is because there have been too many projects in too short succession. So when they're all being made at the same time, Kevin Feige can't exert the same influence over them that he usually would have previously. Thor Love and Thunder failed because Taika Waititi had too much creative freedom and Eternals somewhat failed because Chloe Zhao and Kevin Feige were trying to have a tug of war between Chloe Zhao's vision and the MCU's style and tone. I think the mixed reception of Phase 4 though and Kevin Feige's lack of oversight recently have the same root cause and that's the one thing I think Kevin Feige holds above anything else. That is the release date. I think Feige's adherence to the release date holds a bigger part in the MCU's success than people give it credit for, but it might also be his biggest flaw. Yes, you want to make good, crowd-pleasing movies, but you also want to stick to that release date. Never stop, never slow down, because if you don't release three films in one year, you're not going to make three billion dollars in one year. Don't cancel projects, just get them out there on the release date. Because all these films are so connected, delaying one is so difficult, because if you delay one, you'll have to delay all the ones that have to come out afterwards, because they have to come out in this specific order, and I think that is a flaw with the MCU. Yes, of course, they had to delay stuff over COVID, but since then, it's been full steam ahead with the release dates. What if the third act doesn't work? It doesn't matter. Just write it while you're filming the first act. What if the special effects aren't finished? It doesn't matter. Just release the project by the release date. We've heard all of this is true by the leaked reports from these effects companies that Marvel are overworking. They keep changing their mind about what the third act should look like, and they keep changing scenes and designs so close to release date that the effect companies don't have time to finish them. They just have to keep redoing it because Marvel will never delay. So many projects have been falling short recently, but Kevin Feige won't stop that because he knew to make these changes to make them better, he'd have to delay everything and he does not want to do that. And you've got to consider that James Gunn must be aware of all of this because he's worked so closely within the MCU over the last decade. So... If the producer prioritises the release date like I've been making an argument for, what does the writer slash director like James Gunn prioritise? The story, obviously. James Gunn has recently said the following to the press. I've seen it happen again and again. It's a mess. It's the primary reason for the deterioration in quality of films today versus 20, 30 years ago. It's the degradation of the writer in Hollywood has been a terrible story. It's gotten much worse since I first moved here 23 years ago. Writers have been completely left out of the loop in favour of actors and directors and making the writer more prominent and more important in the process is really important to us. This feels like he's directly referencing Marvel's style here and I couldn't agree more with what James Gunn is trying to say. You want a good universe? Prioritise a good story. This should be obvious. But he goes on to say... They make these movies where they don't have third acts written, and then they start writing them during production, you know, making them up as they're going along. You need to tell stories that are more morally complex. You need to tell stories that don't just pretend to be different genres, but actually are different genres. Now I find this genuinely exciting. James Gunn is the best person on the planet to be heading up the DCU right now. Not just because he is such a successful writer and director specifically within the superhero genre, but because he understands better than most what is going wrong at the MCU right now and what is working at the MCU. He understands its flaws and he understands why it has made so much money because he has worked within the machine and he knows how to do it better. And a bit of a sidetrack, what I think is so brave about the DCU is if they think they have a really strong story which doesn't quite fit into their vision, then they'll still make it and just label it as DC Elseworlds. This includes stuff like The Batman and Joker, which have been so critically and commercially successful. I think this is a really strong idea in how to prioritise stories. Because this should be so obvious, you want to make a successful blockbuster, make it good! Before it came out, no one was expecting Top Gun Maverick to be anything. I personally wasn't looking forward to this film because I thought it was just a pointless, money-grabbing rehash of a great film. I watched Top Gun Maverick in the cinema four times because I loved it that much. And yes, it was just cash-grabbing, but you don't care when the film was as good as this was. And it made so much money. 
The two highest grossing films of last year were Top Gun Maverick and Avatar 2, two blockbusters which were carefully crafted with thought going into the story and they took their time over them and they delayed them again and again until they had the right story. Yes, they were both cash grabs, but the directors and the people involved genuinely cared about the stories they were trying to tell and told it in the best, most thoughtful way they could manage. When you look at the variety of projects Gunn has announced, when you look at the passion in which he talks about the comics they're based on, the characters they are translating, I, I know he will do great because he's prioritising writers and not release dates, because we didn't get any release dates really for what's coming out, apart from Superman and The Batman 2. Sure, every film might not be a great hit, but that's the price you've got to pay when you're making a shared universe. Under James Gunn's guidance, I think the DCEU is going to do great. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the DCU announcement and what I think is going wrong with the MCU at the moment. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Please like this video, please comment, and please subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.